everybody. Josh, your RV nerd, Bishop's RV. Actually, down here at Coachman today, where I uh, they, they set up a nice display for me where I got to take a look through their whole family of these little baby campers. And you know, it occurs to me, since my time entering into the RV industry, RVs every year keep getting bigger and heavier and bigger and heavier and more expensive. Well, that's where this one kind of comes in. And it's really cool because these things fit in those vehicles that have like maybe a 3,500 pound tow rating. This thing's about 2,600 pounds dry. What's cool is they're actually outfitting them with like a 4,000 pound axle, but they're rating it at 3,500 pounds, which makes it, uh, you know, legal for those like 3,500 pound GV or tow rating kind of uh, vehicles to be able to tow this thing around. Now that's absolutely maxing your capacity. I wouldn't recommend it long-term for long durations, but in theory, you've got a small set of enclosed hard sides that give you an option other than just a, a canvas soft-sided pop-up. But uh, you, you've got a dedicated bed space. You've got at least some kind of seating area inside. You do have a dry bath where it's a separate toilet and shower and a little bit of a kitchenette. But this is an awesome camper for someone who wants something small, simple, easy, very towable, very mobile, and they just want to do a little camping, not do this like forever lifestyle glamping kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not for everybody. So if you like how we get you all kinds of different shapes and sizes of things, hit that subscribe button and let's get in there. And I think one of the hardest parts about going through this RV today is that I, I'm kind of stubborn in that I generally refuse to use a fisheye wide angle camera lens, which would make my job so much easier today. But I also feel greatly deceives and misleads potential buyers by giving you the impression of something having more space than it actually does. And I want to try to represent things as clearly and candidly as I possibly can. So I'm going to have to do a lot of up, down, in and around work with the camera today so that you can see everything. The good news is this is not a giant RV, so it actually shouldn't be too terribly awful. One of the unsung benefits of a stick and tin camper, by the way, is how they can put power outlets like right next to the kitchen countertops where you actually want them. Um, that's a, uh, a, a, a cool little thing that they're doing there. I also enjoyed the fact that in that rear bathroom, they're not using the peekaboo, I smell you bathroom door. Um, I'm sitting on the sofa, as you've probably guessed. So this is kind of looking up right here. And if you want to put a TV in it, it's going to pretty much mount right about there. So you'd be straight across from it. Um, down below is our, uh, refrigerator. Now, because of space allowances, they were not able to put a, uh, you know, like big 12 volt or gas electric. That is a 110 electric only, basically like one of those college kid dorm fridges that they put in here. It's kind of one of those cases where they're doing the best they could. I will say though, Catalina is doing a solid job on like cabinetry fit and finish. And one of the ways that they're accomplishing that is they're using um, pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry. They don't use like stapled fasteners, you know. These are held together by more than just staples in your imagination. <laughs> That's just a big pocket up there. What would you put in that? I, I don't love the fact that it doesn't have a cabinet door closing it in, but it probably wouldn't be. <laughs> so I'm right next to the stovetop. I knew I would do that. I uh, I pushed the stovetop knobs in, which activated the the, uh, the little spark clicker. So let's let's do a drinking game. Every time you hear this, that's me trying to light the stove that uh, isn't going to light. Um. Anyway, up front here, this is a sixty by seventy four camp queen, a short queen. However, you've also got this uh, handy little headboard up here, which when I say it like that, it sounds like one of the you know the Mickey Mouse Club mouse tools. Like huh, it's a mouse tool that'll help us later, goof. You know. <laughs> but uh the thing is if you notice where they put the power outlets above that if you wanted to remove that little boxy kind of foot locker headboard locker whatever you want to call it you could put a true queen bed in here alternatively depending on how you feel about it you could actually just put your pillow right over the top of that so that you can essentially simulate a, uh, a a longer bed in this thing. Now, I'm not saying that's an ideal solution. It's just a, a solution, an idea. I also want to mention they have uh, changed over, like, basically the pretty much all GE appliances, including the new GE, there it is again, the, the stupid spark burner, the GE Profile Air Conditioner. What's awesome about that, first of all, it's quieter than what they used to use. Secondly, it has a heat pump on it. 
So this is both an air conditioner and an electric heater uh, in this little bitty box here, which I think is actually kind of a cool thing. Plus the RV does still have a propane furnace. So you, in a sense, have two methods of heating. Um, although this is not like tested for some sort of like Arctic camping use. This RV though does not have much in the way of like, well, it has zero really hanging clothing storage unless you repurpose the shower. And what do you think about this? I don't know that I actually hate this to, to be smaller and lighter weight, having just a reinforced shelf with the, uh, the handy little storage totes. I don't think that's a terrible idea. Now, the uh, the totes do have a little bit of a lip to keep them in place. I would say personally for transit, I would also probably come up with some kind of way of strapping those things down or together or something like that, just so that they didn't jiggle bang out of place, uh, as it were, which is a technical term, mind you. Um, let's talk about the sofa. Oh, um, I got my butt right against the wall here because we are, again, tight quarters, kind of like my... Uh, well, kind of like my belt line with the weight I've been putting on lately. Uh, it's a jackknife sofa. So if you want to, you, you can use it for big time storage below, but you're probably going to want to get some more totes. It can fold down into a sleeper, albeit a very small one. That's going to be good for small kids or big dogs or something like that. Uh, that's, that's all she's really made good for. It, it's also worth noting with this being a no slide RV. It's, it's an easy stealth mode camper, which is my little phrase for like, if you pull into like the cracker barrel overnight, uh, it, it's very easy to, uh, to, to use the whole RV and never even unhook from your vehicle. You know, little details like that are, are really handy sometimes. Uh, giving you a look at the little bit of kitchen storage that we have here. It, it is worth noting that upper overhead cabinet, it actually does slink around the corner a little bit behind the microwave, which is awkward, but at least it's not wasted space. Overall, they did a pretty good job of not wasting space uh, through the RV. Because in a little trailer like this, when it comes to storage, every ounce counts. And right now, there's at least one person who's like European who's watching this and go, why do Americans measure their storage in ounces? Uh, they don't. It's just a, a silly phrase that I have. Now, if you look at this, they did have to build the toilet up on a little bit of a platform right here. Uh, and I sat on it, and it definitely does sit higher. So I asked about that, and basically because the chassis of the RV is so small, they had to build the toilet up a little bit to give the basically the, the, the toilet the proper angle to run off and direct stuff into the black tank. Otherwise, you could have a bit of a pyramid uh, in, the, uh, in the chain. Now, I was worried about the shower height because the RV is only six and a half foot tall to the sidewall, and I'm a little over six foot plus shoes. But with the Wombo Combo Skylight Vent Fan, which I think is really smart in a little trailer, it uh, I was still able to stand up there now, albeit my head could still knock the sides of that. I had to be a little smart, a little careful about it. Um, it's not a medicine cabinet, by the way. It is just a mirror on the wall. But I do think it helps open that space up uh, a little bit. The power outlets up there are a little interesting. But I suppose for hair dryers, I'd, obviously I don't have need for one. One thing, though, and I like to be fair, it does not have shower surround panels. So, like, what do you do in this case? Well, first of all, ignore the fact that I'm sweating like a pig. Which, by the way, why do we say that? What is that? Where does that phrase come from? Because pigs don't sweat. That's why they wallow in mud. That's how they cool themselves off. Why do we say sweating like a pig? Anyway, um, I got way off topic there. Uh no shower surround paneling. What do you do? Well, when you're done taking your shower, you take your towel and you wipe down the wall panels and you make sure you run that ceiling vent fan up there. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to have a bit of a problem. Now, if you do what I just described, you won't have an issue. This is how RVs were done for decades and it wasn't a problem, but that's not how RVs have been made for a long time. And if you're not familiar with that or what to do with it, it could be a problem, so I hope you appreciate the little bit of a pro tip there for you. But seriously, why do we say sweating like a pig? So giving us a second look at the weights and measures here, uh, again, something I, I want to point out is they're actually going to essentially in intentionally derate the weight ratings on this RV to, to pretty much hit like a 3,500 pound uh, gross vehicle weight. Uh, the, the idea there being this uh, opening up uh, legality for smaller vehicles because that's that's the thing I don't know a lot of people realize a lot of people will pair up 
trailers and and vehicles based on the dry weight of the trailer versus the tow rating of the vehicle and what you really want to do is pair up the gvw of the trailer because that's kind of your legal requirement so um you know if you've got a smaller capacity vehicle even though theoretically the rv is rated for more than that it's nice that you're not going to be you know overloading stuff now this is uh they're, they're running a seven and a half foot wide body on one of these so it's not super uh big and intimidating but it, it allows them to give you a decent space inside while keeping the rv kind of short and light you might notice down below here they are running a, uh, a Norco chassis, not a uh, you know traditional industry Lippert frame. Catalina is one of the very few stick and tin builders who does anything like that. That is a gas and electric water heater, by the way. It's a little bit different looking one, so I want to make sure I point that out because not everyone's kind of trained visually to pick that up. Uh, and the uh, you know the 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 tire package that you have on here, that's basically to help give it a little more ground clearance, so you're not scraping your sewer stuff on the ground. One thing I did notice on this that I don't personally love. Uh, they only have rear stabilizer jacks. That's one of those cost measures that I see a lot of brands do when you get into a very small cost sensitive single axle. And you see again that GE uh, profile air conditioner up there. Having that built in heat pump in this little thing, that is a really cool feature. Not to mention it's less noise because in a small box like this, man, noise makes a big, big deal. Uh, in the upper left corner, you see where she is prepped and ready for one of those telescopic removable ladders that is not included with the RV, but it does mean you can get up to that roof. And by default, this has no solar, but it is um, solar prepped, by the way. Uh, neat little thing I like to point out here is the uh, the black tank flush. It's kind of a lame thing to talk about, but not a lot of little campers have them. Uh, so it's just nice to be able to really kind of hose your tanks out. They do have a 200 watt uh, optional solar package with a 30 amp controller, by the way. And I've got a question for you. Let's talk about this awning or kind of the lack thereof. And it's not Coachman's fault. They didn't go cheap on it. There's literally just no sidewall space to put a good awning on this RV. So you've got, I'm shooting from the hip, like an eight foot maybe awning. At that point, should they even bother with an awning? Or would you rather save the money and just get like an easy up screen room or something? Now this looks like they went cheap and only used one outside speaker. Actually, this is a really nice sound system. That's a JBL uh, actually dual output speaker. It does have left and right elements. It's just localized. And you know, the RV is not very large. To me, it kind of makes sense. Even though they do that on pretty much all their campers, that's what they're doing here. And I was actually very pleasantly surprised with the storage over here under that front bed. Um, it's not a slam latch, but it does have a magnet holdback. Oh, what do you also, what do you think of the stable steps in on this RV? Do you think those are the right call or would you prefer the old traditional fold out steps? Maybe save a little weight and a couple bucks. Now it's also kind of cool. If you like this concept, you're like, I want a, a, a compact little camper to take my family, you know, toting around. They make something like that too. So once again, if you're trying to take a family camping um, and you're going out for maybe a limited time or you have very limited tow capacities because you don't have the opportunity to change out your daily drive, like maybe you got a 4,500 uh, pound tow package SUV. That's where something like this, actually my little baby Ranger, my Ford Maverick, theoretically would be set to handle one of these. Um, it would still be working or pretty good, but if I was just gonna local flatland every now and then, I could maybe see that, I could see that potentially. But that's my two cents. I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about these little guys? And in the meantime, I'll leave you links in the description if we have any in stock. They will be listed on our website with pricing and availability readily available for you. And until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and catch you on the next time, everyone. Catch you. Why did I why did I not just say happy camping everyone like I normally do? I'm an idiot.